Hello. Good evening. So strange, I'm having a live video. And I thought, well, instead of me hosting it, why don't we make a painting together and dance around with music? I'm not going to play the music. You can dance with your own music. I'm Kim. And tonight I have decided to make a cardboard 3D reproduction of Henri Matisse's Le Chat avec les Poissons Rouges. And I'll show you what I'm doing because that's what we're here for, to see what kind of fun things we could do. And uh, let me show you what I'm painting. So please excuse my back, but uh, I'll just show you what I'm up to. So you can Google Henri Matisse's Le Chat avec les Poissons Rouges, but basically you'll recognize it a bit. I've sketched it out very lightly. I've decided to go with cardboard because I have a lot of cardboard boxes from deliveries. And uh, I thought I should do something constructive and artistic with all these boxes. So maybe you have some cardboard boxes at home or some spare cardboard from Recycle. You can do this with a ton of things. Anyway, what I did was I sketched it up and I leveled it out with different, uh, what I think would be the deepest sketches. So this is probably not the best example, but go check out Henri Matisse's Le Chat avec les Poissons Rouges. But I'll show you what it looks like, roughly. This is my first piece. I haven't actually painted it. And then I got the good idea that I should show you how to do this just for fun. Why not? This is part of it. To give you an idea of what I mean by 3D, I've taken another piece that's going to go on top of it like this, but a few millimeters out. So it looks like we're actually looking out a window. So this is sort of trees outside and this is the inside of the house. And it'll be stuck like this. And then after that, when this is, all these pieces go together, we have the cat body that'll be here looking into the glass with the fishes inside or the, the bowl with the fishes. And then we'll have a little cat head somewhere in here a little bit stuck out farther. And then I've already made the fish bowl where the fishes, the cats, Paw, this is where it's going to be a little bit difficult, but it's going to be in here fishing out the red fishes, you see. Anyway, we're going to build this, but I'm currently working on the blue pieces of the wall, like the wallpaper. And so I invite you to check out the Matisse options and uh, check out Le Chat avec les Poissons Rouges. And uh, I'll show you kind of what I'm painting here. And uh, let's paint along, rock it out. And uh, I'll sort of show you what I'm up to. And let's just paint. We'll just paint together. And uh, or you can watch me paint. Let's see what happens. Let me just grab a glass of water. But yeah, get your paint stuff. Let's paint. I think we're going to do this for about a half an hour. Choose your own tunes to rock out to. And uh, I'll meet you back here in about a minute. There we go, sort of relaxing. Put some tunes in. Right now I'm listening to Dead Mouse. And uh, let's just see here. Yeah, let's see here. Yeah, so I think next time I'll work on my lighting, but anyway, we're just gonna paint.
I'll show you the painting I'm talking about just to make sure you know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, check it out. And uh, that's what we're going for. Got the table cut out. So this will kind of go like this a little bit higher, but the cat will be in the way too. So anyway, I'm working on the wallpaper. I was watching a documentary on Georgia O'Keeffe and she had mentioned how bored she got during her classes when she was learning to paint classically. And uh, she got quite bored of mimicking previous professionally successful artists and decided that she'd come up with her own sh style, you know? But I think at the same time, it's beneficial to be able to mimic. And that means the same, like, I find not only painting, but also creating music or theater, that it's important to see what other people have come up with, see how they've explored their own artistic creativity. And then from learning different disciplines from various other successful people, or even people you just find interesting who might be not commercially explosive, right? That you come up with your own your own techniques. But um, so today I am kind of embracing this one particular piece, which I find is very interesting because it's got a landscape in it, so it's a bit intertextual with cats. And uh, a cat subject is, oh, a painting with a cat subject always gets my, gets my attention. But, uh, you know, paint a few things just to, a friend of mine, I was making some just random, indie, like indie, uh, my own cardboard creations, like completely original. And then they said, oh, are you doing some, like, mimicking other people? And I'm like, no, I didn't think about that. I was just making my own cardboard art, uh, especially of a, an animal head that I did. But um, they're like, huh, have you ever seen that Matisse picture? Maybe uh, I thought that's the first thing I thought of when you were doing a, a cardboard sculpture that maybe you might turn a painting into a sculpture but I thought oh that's interesting so once I finished my animal head sculpture I uh and I painted my animal head sculpture kind of inspired by the Klimt kiss and embrace more of the the Klimt Gustav Klimt's the embrace actually but um I'm a big Klimt fan but I thought, oh, maybe I should do a Matisse working cardboard. So here I am. I chose my favorite Matisse. I have so many favorite Matisse pieces, but uh, this one I think really is going to work well in a 3D sculpture. But anyway, turn your tunes up. I don't need to talk. I don't need to talk further, really. I just thought I'd tell you a bit about the background of what inspired me to do this piece. And I'll kind of show you the pieces as I finish them and uh, see where we go from here. You know, if you want to add comments, like here's a question for you. Do you have any artists that you're particularly interested in that you'd like to paint like or that, you you know, paintings that you really appreciate or not even it doesn't even have to be a painting. Are there any artists whose sculptures or multimedia that you like? I love to hear about it because there's so many great artists out there that uh, I I haven't even heard of before, you know, and I'm always interested in learning more. So you can put it down in the comments to uh, let me know about other artists you find interesting. Let's paint away here.
Now, I put the blue base on just so the white would look better against it. Let that dry. I have various citrus fruits that I cut out. Citrus and mango, I think. So it seems to be a small mango, but anyway. So cardboard, yeah. Do you um, have you ever made cardboard sculptures? I'd love to hear about it. Do you have? I don't even know if we can attach pictures in this. Like, can you attach a picture of maybe cardboard art you've made? Love to see it. I particularly like sculpture because I think with cardboard, even though you can paint on it flat, I think it'd be very interesting to do something three D. I'll show you one of my 3D heads once we're done here, but another little lemon. I don't know if you can see that little lemon. I love studio acrylics. They're pretty good. Watch if it's um, opaque or viscous or non, you know, translu translucent and stuff. Just see, so you, you know, so you have to paint three coats to cover. Should get better lighting in here, I know. There's a little yellow here. Be a little more orange. That's one thing that the that this time has really I've been grateful for is that I've had a lot more time due to a job that I love, but also not having to trans transport myself that I've saved an hour, hour and a half a day, that I've really been able to embrace creating stuff, you know, like painting more and just playing more music, 
ukulele or whatever, you know, just really enjoying time that I normally would have spent in the car. Let that dry. You know, one of the many things I've appreciated. How about yourself? What What's a couple things that you've appreciated during this um, time of sequestering, shall we call it? The social distancing. What have you... What are you grateful for, you know? Or what else are you grateful for? What are the what are the things that you are most grateful for or even new things you're grateful for during this time? I'd love to hear about it because I think that's one thing I've I've found about this is I was grateful before, but even now I'm really more grateful. Last thing to paint here. A couple layers. Anyway, I think the blue is mostly dry. Start working on the white. You know, we need some glasses on the situation. Yeah. Oh, man, I got to clean these. Anyway, I'm working on some light blue accents here. I'm using sort of a, a juicy brush here. This is my palette. This also works very handy if you're going to a party. You can put your beverage here and the little snacks that you want here, but... I haven't been out to a party for a while, so I thought I might use this as my palette, you know? So I got my blues over here and my browns over here and my red and oranges and yellow, my rainbow up here, but it works really handy besides palette paper, but I'm just working on a blue squished with some white over here to use some layering to make that wallpaper a little more it, well, a little more interesting. And you may find that the, the blue on the red is sort of, it's sort of like an optical illusion, you know? I find when I stare at it too long, it's sort of the blue almost comes off the page. But um, you see the difference there with that corner piece. It's got a little white in it. It kind of makes it more reasonable. I don't know. We'll see. How's this go? This is going to have a, a blue swipe here. And then more of a white on the other side here. Yeah, so we'll just kind of do a few white pieces. You know, because drops always seem to have a fong on it, right? Like sort of a little shiny bit. So that's what the white's basically doing here. Just going to put the white topping on a bunch of shapes here. A little rough. And it's also wet. Working with acrylic here, so... It's pretty forgiving, but uh, you know, it does dry reasonably quickly, quicker than oil might, you know. So now I gotta get some blue quickly on here and finish that blending a little bit here. I don't know if I'm gonna be too picky even about it because the whole point of this of this piece is the cat in the middle. So I'm just here to make the water, the, 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 like I said, the, uh, the, the wallpaper in the background, just a little more reasonably interesting, you know, and by no means am I anywhere close to the Matisse situation here, but sort of, sort of uh, a little bit me, a little bit them. And I always like to give credit where credit's due, you know, like he created this piece and there's on the second level, there's no way I'd be able to pay for a Matisse, a real Matisse. So here it is, right? I'm just going to make my own, you know, so see, 
see what inspires me. You know? And of course, Matisse did not have all of these hearts and whatnot throughout their piece, but I thought I would do a little extra. Hearts and stuff, because I don't know where the cat is going to end and where the cat will begin again, you know. So I thought, well, let's uh, put a little more extra pieces in here to see where it happens. Yeah. Just so the cat, uh, when they put the cat body on, it, uh, you know, it duplicates. And then the cat body will cover some of the blue parts and, yeah. I think we need more blue paint, yeah. No, that's kind of the water, the wallpaper now a little bit different, right? So this is what it's gonna look like. Right, again, so the cat body will be here. So you can see how it'll be a little bit behind. So it's really not what we're looking at. It's behind, but it's kind of nice with the hearts and the water droplets, right? So, I mean, it's by no means exact, but it gives us a really nice kind of depth of field. So now I'm going to let that dry. Actually, I'm going to grab a little more blue paint and put some squishes on there. Wish I had a for fast forward button. Maybe next time I'll do this as fast forward. So thanks for your understanding. Remember to hydrate. Basics, seriously, because all what else do you need? right? You get six, seven of these colors, you know, your uh, red, yellow, blue, green, maybe a black, white. There's some really nice metallics out there just for a special kind of effect. Very nice. And you can blend with a little th color theory. You can blend any color you need with a little practice. Let's see. Just putting a layer of darker blue on. And then I'm going to leave it, leave it, leave it. Because again, it's not about, we're here for the cat, right? We have the dark blue in the background. I'm just here to mush in, mush in, mush in, mush in, mush in a little bit. A little mush in, mush in. I don't know, what do you think? It's a little mush in, mush in. A little mush, it's a mush, mush. It might need a little white at the bottom there. Maybe a little more white. Yeah, right. Mushy. It's a little smeary, those guys. Put it in a little more white. Yeah, there we go. More mush. Yeah. Got some white balance in each one. Oh, maybe a little blue smooch in the bottom, and then let's work on the cat body. You know, the hardest part here, I think, was layering, like thinking about the layers. So I divided this into, um, let's just mush that, mush, 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 
couple of brushes. Yeah. Anyway, I may I I, I layer this in about seven layers. So let me explain. We got the original. Now, I did use a piece of fine paper, construction paper, to cut this out and layer on and practice. And once you cut it out, too, you can just alter it later, too, right? So I cut the cat's head out of there. I don't, I don't need that part of the body, so I can use it again elsewhere. I could add depth as I want. But again, this is layer one. There's the outside, so the intertextual reference of another landscape outside the house. I've got the house piece with the cute heart water droplet and sunshine bookshelves, right? So this is layer two, the house. We then have the floor, which is layer three, which is, I'm still really layer two, but now this is actually layer three and four because the table needs legs that is also closer to you than the floor, right? So what'll happen is I made the table legs a little longer because the table goes about here. So I'll probably have to cut half of this off or maybe I'll leave it for effects, but this is level three and four. So three, I'm not sure if you can see that, but three is slightly higher than four. It's one level of cardboard up, right? So this will be three and four. And then let's just see here. The cat body will be layer five, right? But while the head is layer six, so it'll be out here a little bit, right? So let's just stick the head in the armpit there for the time being. We have a tail that's back in level four. It'll be kind of here, right? So you think about that when you're gonna glue stuff together, you know? So four, five, six, right? And then we have the fish bowl that is going to be where the cat's paw is playing, but I'll layer that. That's going to be layer five as well, but it's a bit tricky. So this is actually going to be it, right? So you see how it's getting closer and closer? I'm very excited about this, actually. I didn't even think this would be possible to do, but I thought, well, why not, right? So we have the tail at level four. So we get, again, level one, level two, level three, four, five. And we still have level five, but this is going to be level four again. So I'm going to put enough cardboard, kind of a spacer here. Level six. Right, I'm gonna put the cat, hat, cat head here where it's kind of looking into the fish. I'll put the fish here at level five. And then um, we're going to have, the corner of the room has something over here which is about level five or six again. And then we're gonna put a bouquet in the, in the corner here, just out of interest. So I'm gonna go make some fish now and then we'll stick it all together. I think we're, I'm just gonna paint the body a bit like with a little bit of sunset sunset on the bottom like on the back hind quarters and a little green it's almost like a siamese cat but the instead of the points being brown or black or red they're green right so it's sort of um i don't know if the green's coming off the water or just trying to accent the cat but i'll take the cat apart off the fishbowl here and let's go paint the cat for a bit yeah Not gonna lie, there was some cutting going on and cutting and recutting, so it's kind of fun. You know, experimenting and then adjusting it a bit, but it doesn't have to be perfect, you know? It's a fun project, so just kind of embrace it and then if you like it, go do another project, why not? We got endless amounts of cardboard and then we'll have something to show for by the end of an hour or two, right? Mm -hmm. 
put a little orange in there. Yeah. I love ginger tabbies. I don't know if you're a cat fan, but I'm a big fan of cat of little ginger tabbies. Do you like cats? Do you like dogs? Like, is there a pet that you like more? Tell me about it. Do you have pets? I'm a cat fan. Ginger tabbies are my fave. Oh, there's a little blue on my tail there, but I think what I'll do is I'll go get some fresh water because that's a secret really to working with watercolor or acrylics. There's, it's very important to have in clean water. So you can kind of see a little blue there, but I'll be right back. Feel free to rock out to your own tunes. Yeah. My water's pretty dark from the blue. I'll be right back. Much better, much better. Okay. Anyway, let the orange dry there. We'll top it up a little bit later. I hope you can hear me all right. Keeping it kind of low key. This is sort of two pieces here. So the legs have to be kind of a five. I want to bend it though. There we go. Do you have any colors of cats or dogs that you like? Like, are you prone to like a golden lab or a, uh, oh, those Newfoundlander dogs, they just got such a beautiful black coat and they're just so big and. With St. Bernard where it has sort of the blonde and the white all mixed together with the kind of redhead in between dogs that'll save your life kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, pardon me. There we go. Yeah, look at a nice blend and nice blend. Hmm. 
Now, on this other side of the cat, we have sort of a lime green. I don't think I got green out yet. Let's see. Oof. Uh oh, I just painted my table. Oh well. I have this great green metallic. It's green to yellow iridescent. It's so pretty. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's part green and yellow, but it's got metallic bits in it. I'm gonna use this one because it looks so pretty in the sun. I'm gonna do it. This is the piece we're gonna paint right down here to the side here. Yeah. So we got some green, you see the green there? You see how it's almost metallic though from the side? But yeah, it's so pretty. Now this looks like it's all the way up the corner of the shoulder. Down, down, down to the tippy, tippy, tippy toe. And then blend it in with a bit of yellow. So might need to get a little bit wet here with the yellow to blend. And then blending the yellow in with the green. This is no official strategy here, just what works for me, keeping the lime. Blending, blending, blending. With acrylic, as we said before, it dries fairly quickly. So that's the great part about acrylic, but also a problem that it dries quickly, right? Anyway, I think that's pretty good. That's pretty good, pretty good. Anyway, I'm gonna kind of blend the little yellow in. Cause then the cat head, it kind of, it's gonna be on top and create another, it's gonna go right on top here. So the blending doesn't have to be perfect, right? And a little smoosh, 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 smooshes is always good. Smooshing, get a lot of forgiveness and smooshing. Let me see, uh, yeah, 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 let me just rub that a little bit. Yeah, there we go. There we go. You can see there's a little bit of lime going on, a little bit of yellow in the middle and then orange on the outside. So it's very citrusy, almost, you know, I find this cat almost looks like a mango. I love it. Maybe that's why I like it because I love mangoes. But anyway, a little more smooching. Smoosh, smoosh. I'm gonna let that body dry, but I'm gonna try to make the head the same sort of mix of Smoogy goodness, you know, let that dry. So again, there's the body. There's a little bit of green. I'll turn that a little bit. Yeah, that'll dry. Leave the body. Smoosh. Okay, head time. All right. We have a little bit of an orange ear on one side. We're gonna smooch again in the middle here. And a little bit of a, a green smoochy face, smoochy. Smoogy, smooch, smooch, yeah, smoogy. Then I'm going to go to the sort of the side of the head and the green ear over here. Then we'll smooch it with some yellow, smooching. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah. Oh yeah, I really like that. We got some smooching into the green. Forgiveness smooching, more yellow. And then we're gonna come down with the yellow and smooch a bit of the face here. Yeah, smooch, smooch, smooch. Smooch, 
Yeah, and then I think the orange dried a little too fast there, so I'm gonna put a little more orange on and smoosh it. Yeah, I'm gonna smoosh it. There we go. Let's see, yeah, I think that's gonna be really good. It's a little more yellow. It's a, I mean, mine is a little more green, a little more yellow than Matisse, but that's okay, because it's mine. I make this in honor of Henri, and then later I'm gonna add some black felt pen to that or some paint. See the heads a little bit, yeah. Let's see what that looks like together, shall we? So you'll notice the paper actually sort of curves naturally as it gets wet. This, this can work to our advantage or disadvantage, but we're basically gonna put the head on top of that body. So I'm gonna let that dry, like work on the red fish and uh, that's it, yeah. Once it's dry, we'll glue it together. So hopefully it'll dry in the next 20 minutes so I can finish this before the end of this live stream. So if you didn't catch the live stream, thanks for checking it out afterwards. I hope you are inspired to do something creative for yourself. Just paint, right? Seriously, that's the one thing. It's like grab some paint. Yeah, I have to admit, it did cost me about 20 bucks for the, you know, the first set of yellow, red, blue, green, black, but why not, right? Some paint brushes. You can get a cheap set of multi-sized brushes for five bucks, seriously. And a little canvas, a five by seven for, you can get three five by sevens for less than 10 bucks. So you could be painting, right? And then it's hours of pleasure, hours. Houston, we have a problem. We have a hair in the paint. Oh dear, I'll pick that up later. Okay. Fish. Okay, so here's my water dish with the fish in it. Well, it will have fish in it in a moment, but we need a little bit of a sort of a, a showing where the, the water the water edge is, you know what I mean? And also there's a bit of a transparent bottom. So we wanna be able to see where that bottom is. So if you go observe some actual clear dishes, you'll see that you can see the bottom of the cup, but also the top of the cup, right? And that takes a little practice to get that edge. So I'm not fully committing to it in pen or felt pen, but you can see I did it in pencil just ever so slightly. But I'll fill that in a little bit more with some gray or black later. But I need three fishes to fit in this size. So now I'm gonna go get some cardboard to fill that in. And I also didn't glue it all the way down. You might see that it's a bit 3D because I wanna give some space for that cat foot to fit in, right? And then maybe 3D fish here. So, but this almost gives a bit of 3D. That's what I'm aiming for anyway. And to be honest, I cut the paper too skinny for the cup. So I had to attach the edges, but then this realized it was too long. So it popped up and I embraced that. So embrace it. You know, you'll be surprised about the nice things that happen just by embracing it. So uh, yeah, let's see what the fishes look like. Listen to your, again, I hope you're having a good time rocking out to some music. I'm going to uh, find three fishes that'll fit in here and I'll be right back. All right, so imagine that. Then we'll glue this baby together.
need another thin piece of paper, cardboard. These, I love these fish because they're red. It's very striking. Can sketch some out on some hard card and paint it up. We'll give some. Oops, where'd that fishy go? There it is. So I got my wee fish and I'm just going to paint him red here. So here's a question. Have you ever had fish? Have you ever had a fish tank or a gold fish or maybe a fighting fish or something that's in a bowl? Did you have a fish or, and what color was it? Or uh, what was its name? And how did you enjoy having that as a pet? How was it like for a, like as a fish that you couldn't pet as opposed to a cat or dog where you might take it for, you know, outside or play with it with some toys or something. What was it like having a fish? I always thought fishy tanks were the most beautiful thing. Especially tropical aquariums, you know, with like anemones and lionfish and uh. that's one thing that makes me think we don't have malls anymore. I mean, I know the malls are opening up, but there's some malls around the world that have a big, like gigantic tropical fish tanks and or even the fish stores, right? It's like, where do you get fish? It's 
It's amazing just to think about it. Okay, I got the fish painted. You know what I don't have is a bouquet yet, but that's okay because I'm going to go make one later. I will make a new video showing you the whole thing put together and on the wall and the various positions of it. You don't need to stick around for the gluing, but I'll show you what basically I'm going to do now to layer it. Again, I've kind of made more background than the has to. So, for example, for layer one, it really ends here and here, but I painted what well outside the border, right? So now I'm going to glue all over here so I can add, oops, the interior of the house to it, okay? So let's see what that looks like. Great stick glue. Oh, great stick glue. Best thing since sliced bread, right? Lots of glue. I'm going to squish this between some heavy books too. But basically, we're going to negotiate where that goes. I want it, I think it's more important to be on this, on this on the outside edge than the inside edge. So we're gonna glue it like that, it's glued, right? I'm gonna squish that. Then we're gonna put the bottom of the house on. Right. That's the bottom, so I'm gonna glue that now. Which way's up? Glue, so good. There we go. Right? Now I'm going to glue the table on. And then from there, I think I'm going to have to stick it under a book for a while. So just to remind you where we're at here too, I've got the cat body, which I'm gonna intertwine with the fish. Then I've got the fish painted here. They're just drying. I might paint both sides anyway, but so I might take me a little longer, but I'm gonna stick the fish on the fish bowl and then put the fish bowl on the table and then put the cat paw inside the fish bowl, then put the tail and the head on the cat then put the cat on the table. So it's a lot like that song, you know, your head is a, your head bone is attached to the neck bone, neck bones attached to the shoulder bone and stuff. So I'm going to go put it all together and I'll have another video to show you the final product. And then I'm going to stick it on the wall in that next video too. I think it'll be ready. That's where I can edit a bit and make sure it's glued. Then I'll look all over it to paint I'll paint some, just make sure the edges look good and trim it with some scissors if I have to. And uh, I will, within the next hour, have my beautiful Matisse Le Chat Avec Les Poissons Rouges as my final project by the end of the evening. And I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. And I hope that I have inspired you to create your own painting, perhaps, perhaps original perhaps inspired by one of the masters, perhaps a mix of both, and using things that we have close by, like recycled cardboard, and uh, mix it up. And I'll put a video of my uh, finished animal head as well, and painted in the style of both The Kiss and The Embrace by Gustav Klimt. Great. So we'll end it here. I hope you continue to dance on tonight, dance and paint. And uh, hope to see you again at the next street next Friday. Have a great week and be well. Safe travels. <laughs>